Hello, I'm Yveka Rangupa, and today on Medical Matters, we're going to explore some fundamental aspects of autism. Autism is a complex neurological condition characterized by difficulties in social communication and interaction alongside restricted interests and repetitive behaviors. Autism encompasses a wide spectrum of symptoms and behaviors, making each individual's experience unique. So autism is a developmental disability. It is lifelong. We typically see the signs from about 18 months of age. Sometimes it's sooner and there's more and more testing coming out or evaluations and assessments that are able to pick it up a lot sooner than 18 months. It goes right through the lifespan. So we call it cradle to grave. We prefer the term disability as opposed to disorder for various reasons, but disability just has more positive connotations to it. The signs that we generally see and that parents start to notice is that their child is either speaking a little bit later or they're speaking very, very well. So it is called a spectrum for a reason because we can have a varying range of signs and characteristics. We see a lot of sensory difficulties with autistic people, both hypersensitive, so very sensitive, and hyposensitive, so not very sensitive at all. We see behavioral differences as well, and we see social differences. So there's a variety of different characteristics of autism that we see that come together. Now, let's dive into the signs of an autistic person. Common signs, typically we see either a lack of speech or delayed speech, or we see a child who speaks very, very well sort of above their age level. So there's, they're kind of, a lot of people call them precocious speakers. So they're speaking with large vocabularies at a very young age. The sensory differences come into play here. So it's very sensitive to lights, to sounds, to textures, to tastes. Um, it, it goes a lot deeper than that, but also they might not be sensitive to those things. Um, so we see a lot of that coming into play. Behavioral differences, autistic people have what is known as repetitive behaviors, and that could be related to motor issues, it could be related to their sensory difficulties. And we see social differences. Autistic people interact differently, and it's not to say that those social interactions are wrong, they just, it's a different way of interacting. In the same way that different cultures interact socially differently, autistic people interact differently as well. Diagnosing autism involves a comprehensive evaluation by a team of healthcare professionals, including medical examinations, cognitive and language assessments, and behavioral observations. Early diagnosis is crucial for initiating appropriate interventions. So the diagnostic process is a complex one. And what has unfortunately happened is the research is focused on boys predominantly. So we're seeing a lot more boys being diagnosed at younger ages and our girls are getting forgotten about and missed. But usually the parents will notice that there's something different with their child's development and will then approach either Autism South Africa or their pediatrician or their local clinic, whoever is kind of their first port of call. And they will then be referred to a specialist which is generally a developmental pediatrician, or um, in our government hospitals, we have our neurodevelopmental clinics where a team will, will do an assessment. The child is then assessed and the diagnosis is then made, but that process can be long and it can be complex. Um, a lot of children are missed. The, the process has definitely become better in the last even two years, um, but we're still seeing a lot of people being missed, especially our girls. So a lot of women are now being diagnosed in their 30s and 40s, and we're seeing a lot of adults come through to us as well who say, I think I'm autistic, how do I go about getting the diagnosis? And finally, let's discuss treatment options for individuals diagnosed with autism. There's various therapies that people can go for, such as speech therapy or occupational therapy, but it all depends on that individual. And I think the most important thing when looking at supportive interventions is ensuring that the autistic person is at the center and that the family becomes a team with the therapeutic team to ensure that everybody's on the same page. Thank you for joining us today on Medical Matters. Understanding and acceptance are crucial for supporting individuals with autism. Until next time, take care.